everybody, and welcome to our next MySec Chapter Meetup. Uh, tonight in Grand Rapids, just one quick announcement going on right now. Um, the Converge CFP and workshops just opened up. So, <gasps> talk louder? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, it's just recording. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were pulling my leg, like, oh, what did I do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, if if you are, uh, is there? Uh, I have a better question. Is anyone here um, getting their newsletter? Um, if you're not, we actually just revamped the entire newsletter to basically focus on everything that we can find in Michigan that's going on in re regards to security. So every single group that we know about, we put our stuff up there. Every conference that we know that's in Michigan, we put it up there. Um, special events, stuff like that. We're trying our best to just have like a single source where people can go and find out InfoSec in their area as best that we can. So if you have other stuff that you want to promote or do, let us know and we'll do our best to get it out there so that people can find it. Um, without further ado, I will kick it over to Reaper. Okay. Um, so, hi, uh, quick intro. Uh, my handle's Reaper. Um, I've been doing security for many years now, more than I care to admit. Um, I started out with DOD, went to private sector, and I've had a lot of fun doing it. I'm hoping to share a little bit of what I've learned. So without further ado, we'll jump right in. Um, so my presentation tonight is about Sigma, Lalbus, GTFO bins, and me. And uh, what we're going to talk about is what Sigma is, what Lalbus is, what GTFO bins is. Um, we're also going to very briefly talk about MITRE, ATT, and CK, and we're also going to talk a little bit about atomic tests, just to make our lives easier. Um, <clears throat> so, we'll jump right in. Um, who here's heard of Sigma and knows a little bit about it? Quick show of hands. Got one. Okay, so, got two. Um, what Sigma is, is think of it as portable correlation logic that you can share agnostic to your sim. Um, who knows what a sim is? Okay, so everybody knows security incident and event management. It's what our security bread and butter is, right? It's where all the logs go to die. No, I'm joking. Um, what we do with it once it gets there is correlate on all the things that get into the sim to detect and make our lives as security analysts, operations, whatever our title is, suck a little bit less. The key takeaways for Sigma are that it avoids a lock-in. The nice thing about Sigma is that you can write your content in it, and then there's tools within the packages that allow you to port it from Sim A to Sim B. An example would be, I can write content for ArcSight and then convert it over into Splunk. Um, you're going to have to tweak it as well, especially if you're using some of the more advanced functionality inside of Splunk, um, but it gets you into the ballpark and gets you something to work off of. It makes content sharing easier. So when we talk about our sims, we get to talk in these awesome organizations like ISSA, like, um, a, well, can I mention Dib? Dib. The DIB, uh, other organizations like that that are all about sharing intel, sharing how we do things, right? The problem that we run into is a lot of the content that we write in our sims typically are very specific and proprietary to our environments. So generally legal gets involved and they say, no, 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 let's not share that. Um, this makes it a little bit easier to do so. So it also makes it more, um, more readily identifiable what log sources matter to you. So in the Sigma notation, one of the things that it calls out is what log sources are necessary for the specific detection that you're running in that Sigma set. And then last point is the easiest summary that I've found is Sigma is for log files, what Snort is for network traffic, and what Yara is for typical files. <clears throat> this is an eye chart, I apologize. I wanted to show you just what the structure looks like. Um, you'll see a lot of the fields within Sigma are optional, which is the nice part about it. So it doesn't require you to put information in there. It's all optional. There are required ones like a title, and I would recommend some sort of a description in there. Um, it says it's optional, but I would definitely <laughs> recommend putting it in there so you can figure it out when you need it. 
And then the rest of it is all just to define what the detection is, how it's working, what logs it needs, um, categorizations, whether it's, um, well, excuse me, not categorization, but status, as to whether it's in a deployed running configuration and in an experimental stage, whatever that status is, so you can quickly and readily identify where it is in the development pipeline. Because as we all know from development backgrounds, right, we should always test before we go into production with our sim content before it goes pear-shaped when it's in production and you're all getting false alarms on multiple things. So, <clears throat> jumping gears on us. So it's cool that we've got this sigma notation which helps us to identify when, um, when we've got good content correlation-wise that we wanna share. But one of the things that we all struggle with as attackers, or excuse me, as defenders, is what are some of the common ways that somebody would get into a system. So I lead us over into Lulbus and GTFO bins. So Lulbus is, um, quick show of hands, has anybody heard the term before, Lulbus? Okay, so it's living off the land binaries and scripts, right? As an adversary, when I'm attempting to get a foothold into an environment, I want to leverage what's already there for me to go after and attack their infrastructure. So if I don't have to bring content to it, I have less risk of being detected if the stuff that I'm looking to execute in is already present on the target device. That's why PowerShell Empire was so darn popular, right? Everybody deploys PowerShell everywhere, it seems like. So this example is geared towards XWizard. Everybody remembers XWizard? No? Yes? Uh, file mover, okay? It's packaged with Windows. It's really old. Um, it's been there forever from what I can recall. Um, and as an adversary, I can exploit XWizard to get secondary exploitation. We'll cover that real quick here. So what does it do? It's, I just pulled this off a file inspect library. It's, like I said, just a file mover. Long and the short of it is. But if we put this together, so you saw the T number, uh, T1218. Can you see that or no? I apologize. Tiny, but signed binary proxy execution. Because this X wizard is already trusted by the operating system, this thing can be leveraged as an attack mechanism inside of the operating system since it's already there, okay? <clears throat> so because of that, I'm gonna leverage X wizard as a mechanism for me to get whatever it is I'm trying to detonate in and trust it. So why do you care? Um, Sigma's entire point were two big things. One, it was to aid us in sharing content, and it was designed to avoid that vendor lock-in. Um, I don't know if anybody's done licensing recently with, if to show my age, uh, ArcSight, for example. Back when HP acquired them, and they transitioned from their prior licensing model to what HP wanted done, it was very, very pricey to transition over. Um, as a direct result, if I had had the ability to jump ship from ArcSight onto a different sim, it would have been much easier. So this helps us keep our costs more manageable because we have that ability to agnostically change what our sim is, regardless of the rule. Because that rule is written in that Sigma notation, it's much easier for me to port it over. Um, <clears throat> it also allows for easier content sharing within the community. Um, it also allows for write once, use everywhere. We've always talked about developmentally that we want to recycle content wherever we can. Um, well, we want to recycle good content wherever we can developmentally. And this allows for that possibility with regards to our sims. The other thing to keep in mind, um, everybody's familiar with object-oriented programming? Okay, so the concept is you write once, you invoke everywhere, right? With these base detections in place, you've got something to build off of inside your sim. So the thing that I would advocate that Sigma will help you to do is you've got these base detections, now you can build out more advanced detections off of these base detections that you've got. It gives you the minimum baseline of, hey, when xwizard.exe files, uh, excuse me, when xwizard.exe fires and I see this type of a payload coming in, um, I want to be responding X, Y, Z. It also allows for secondary correlation then once you've got that base detection in. So that's the true benefit of it. Um, and the other big thing is keep in mind, we're using Snort and Yara in our environments all day, every day. Chances are real good. You have 
already a built out pipeline for utilizing Sigma. So um, those are the big key takeaways. Um, GTFO bins, the only reason I mention it is because it is what Lulbus is for Linux. So GTFO bins is get the truck out um, binaries and it's all about escaping the shell, okay? So ATT, or excuse me, um, GTFO bins does not map quite as readily to ATT and CK since it's primarily focused at Windows. There are quite a few exploitations that do map, but this is not an example. And when I was looking through GTFO bins, I was not able to find an ATT and CK tactic that actually mapped to anything. So if you guys saw one, please <laughs> draw my attention to it, but I could not find an example of it. Um, this is what I covered and part of what I haven't covered yet. So we were gonna switch gears off of presentation to a little bit of stuff that I've created and that I was wanting to share. So. Bear with me just one minute. I just left the defaults on. <laughs> All right, so can anybody see this, or is this too tiny? Pretty small. Is that better? Okay. So this is not, I wanna dis disavow, this is not my content. I directly lifted this from a prog. Uh, D for Sands Summit back in 2016, I want to say. It's in the resources, and I highly recommend taking a read through it. The gist of the presentation was basically that in order for us to write good content for our sims, we need to understand what the log source is, who the stakeholder is, where it comes from. And the part that ties this all together is that what, I, what I'm trying to do is build out content that my SOC analysts can use. What I'm trying to help them with is understanding what that content looks like inside of the sim. So we're going to get to the field that's got it, but basically the detection logic would be written in Sigma notation rather than in your straight sim language to make it easier on portability and um, allows us that we don't get locked into any one particular vendor. But what I would like for um, my sim analysts is to understand where it lives in the attack kill chain, right? Um, everybody knows Lockheed Martin's cyber kill chain. Okay, cool. <clears throat> the objective would be to alert on a multiple user account being accessed from the same IP address. The threat is password spraying. Um, your stakeholders would be those data owners or those system owners, so you'd identify that. The source data would be the structure. Um, the data requirements would be if you have anything that um, has any kind of compliancy requirement around it, you would identify that here. It's really, really important to remember that for data retention, you want to consider it from cradle to grave. With regard to the data retention component of it, you want to make sure that the thing is retired because your sim bogs down the more data it's got in it. You want to keep that thing lean and mean as you can. Get your low and slow detections off to a secondary storage location. Um, but that data retention helps you identify those types of things. The critical data um, is just to help you identifying what things matter the most. So what I'm saying by that is it's kind of hard to correlate an activity to an identity if you have no logs that map a host to an asset to an identity so things like your firewall perimeter your proxies all of those things all have that critical data that you're going to need so you want to identify that and then this is where it all ties together your detection logic should be written in that sigma notation the goal is that you would have a whole bunch of sigma de detections written and you would use these the uh, last part and probably the most important is test and this is where we segue over to atomic red team everybody's familiar with atomic red team okay so if you're not um, atomic red team has got uh, a bunch of very small lightweight tests that you can run against your systems to allow you to simulate adversarial behavior i strongly advocate taking a look at them but the point of this is that you would use that SOC use case spreadsheet to track 
your sigma notation detections, to your ATT and CK exploits. Use Atomic Red Team to um, validate your expected results out of it. And um, that's pretty much it. Um, I was expecting this to be kind of interactive, so hit me with any questions you've got. I have not. Enter. Okay. Okay. If you look at the sample, mm -hmm. essentially you do something similar where it's a goal categor categorization, mm -hmm. your strategy abstract, that's Perfect. Like what you're trying to detect. And then your technical context, like with what is my words, you put in your blocks and spots and assumptions and requirements. So like you know like you don't have these blocks. So you can write everything else to detect it, but yeah. because you don't have it, you go back. So that's awesome. That's a good uh, call out there, that last part. Um, so one last component that I did not mention was that the uh, last one was the prioritization and the output, which is exactly what you said. You need to build out your runbook, your playbook for your analysts to go down and dog down the alerts. Um, so this closes a loop, but that's awesome too, yeah. So it'll be two, right? Now you have to do evasion before you can do the atomic test, right? <coughs> um, that that was it. Unless anybody's got any other questions, comments. All right. Well, thank you for your time.